Since the last video, I've been hard at work upgrading, but more realistically, fixing the broken 3D printer. Once the cameras were off, error after error occurred. I think it's jammed again. But eventually, I was able to get the machine running to the point where I can make a video on it while I waited for the remaining parts to arrive, which should improve it even more. I finally invested in a proper filament dryer heater and maybe something else as well. In this video, we swap out the old V6 hot end assembly for a powerful volcano heater block and CHT nozzle combo for fast flow rates, as well as swap a few things around, but most importantly, finally put clipper firmware on this machine, which unfortunately took much longer than predicted, but at least it's running now. Let's get into it. What I've got here is a Raspberry Pi 02W and accessories, a completely unnecessary actual fan, a large stepper motor, a new hot end fan, and of course, the new hot end assembly components. The first step was to borrow a larger stepper motor from my DIY camera slider and to test that the new hot end fan did indeed work. Now it was time to build the new hot end assembly. Comparing the two stepper motors, I think this will be a worthwhile upgrade. So we should be extruding filament, but I think it's jammed again. So I'm actually gonna do the hot end swap right now. It isn't shown in the video, but later on I did heat tighten all of the components and reinstall them several times until things improved. I also added a silicone sock from my Ender 3, since this machine is my priority right now. Because the Volcano hot end is longer than a V6, the BL touch has to be moved down slightly to compensate. Okay, I just got it working. So it turns out it wasn't auto leveling using the BL touch because the Z limit switch was too high and it wouldn't allow it to go down any further. Now it's doing it successfully. I'm gonna let that run and then we're gonna set the Z offset. Okay, it's gonna be a bit hard to see for you guys, but I'm gonna adjust the Z offset now. I think all's better than before. So I think it's time to do a test print now. I think, yeah, it should be fine. Okay, so I've opened up a Benchy. We've got standard settings that I would usually use on my other machine, which I trust. It says 22 minutes. So, I mean, a sub, sub 30 minute Benchy for a first test will be good, and then we can try and bring that down to maybe 20, under 20 minutes. That will, that'll be really good. I've also changed the nozzle to 0.6 millimeters in the settings because we were using a 0.4 before. I kind of forgot to add filament, so I'm gonna add that now once it gets to temperature. Once again, I will attempt a PID tune because this is a new hot end assembly with a bunch of new components, so I think I should do that later. Well, once we get a, a, t a test print, of course. Forgot to mention, but I adjusted the fan mount so that we can have the stock fan, the stock 5015 fan without modifying anything yet. We're, we're still planning on adding this really high powered one, but as of now, this will give us adequate cooling for our test. So the whole thing is is clogged again. I, I can't get filament in and there's still filament in there. So it's 
quite annoying. I'm gonna have to take the whole thing apart. So I'll, I'll be back when I've done all that. You can see that that is what was blocking the nozzle. I'm not sure if it's because of cheap filament or, or the PTFE tube, but eventually I'm either gonna upgrade to a Capricorn PTFE tube, Pro probably not. Um, but I am gonna get an all metal heat brake, a bimetal heat brake specifically, because yeah, no bottlenecks basically. I mean, this thing is, this thing should have no issues. So once I get that, I'll have to painstakingly replace the uh, heat brake. Hopefully that's not too hard. Love how the whole thing just slots back together basically. It's actually really satisfying. Still don't want to take, keep taking this thing apart, but it's still pretty satisfying. Let me know if there's any other modifications you guys would like to see done to this machine. Cause I'm still debating whether or not this will be my experiment machine or my Ender 3. But there's definitely going to be one machine that I'm going to keep tinkering with as I get more and more stuff. Cause it's, a, it's actually a lot of fun. I enjoy to tinker with machines, but it's still good to have one machine that just works. The black stepper wire was getting rather damaged. Luckily I noticed it, it was actually like caught in between that little gap there. Okay, seems to be okay. Let's start the print. I oh, actually no, let's get the filament in first. Ah, uh, why is it skipping? It just starts skipping randomly and I don't know why. Oh, we're getting extrusion! Awesome, let's uh, let's see how fast we can go. I've also swapped the extruder, so hopefully we can go even faster now. Gotta test it somehow. Let's put this thing on high. High extrusion speed and see when it, if it can... Uh... So glad we're actually extruding now. Even this spool isn't exactly old. I mean, I opened it like maybe two weeks ago. It's already... I can hear the moisture crackling. Okay, we can do the fast extrusion now. Hey, speed benchy time. Let's see how this goes. Heating up to 205 and cooling down the bed to 55. We're going straight into it. Nozzle may be slightly too close. Okay, we got extrusion. Cooling isn't going to be amazing, but that's not the issue here. Filament is going. Now, I'm obviously not going to do the whole benchy filmed, but I will check back with you guys and see how long it took when it's done. I'm going to bump up the machine speed to 150%. This might be silly considering we don't have much cooling, so the smokestack's probably not going to look too good. I'm optimistic that it's going to make it that far, but we'll see. I'll check back with you guys in five minutes. Okay, we're eight minutes in and it's just on the layer above the infill. So that's, that's pretty cool if we pull up the screen here. You can see we're eight minutes in, temperature's fluctuating a bit, see offset fan. Yeah, so we're, we're really need, we really need more cooling, but at least the hotting can keep up, which is awesome. 13 minutes into the print, it's looking pretty good. Only problem is I can really hear the moisture and we do not have enough cooling. Um, I hear the moisture, I can hear the filament cracking and popping, so that's a bad sign. Also, camera's about to die. We are now 24 minutes in, and it's gonna be done in a few minutes, I think. So, sub 30 minutes, possibly, with tweaking under 20, definitely. Okay, just finishing up the smokestack now. So, we finally got a benchy, and it only took, well, only 30 minutes and 32 seconds, which is pretty good. You may look at it in two different ways. One, that's a terrible benchy, or two, we had a successful print after all of these modifications. And this is before tuning and everything, so I'm sure it'll improve. For V1, I'm gonna attempt to make an adapter that mounts using this hole here and this hole here. I was thinking of mounting it to the stepper motor, but all the screws just seem to strip and not focus. Why does nothing focus? That one's stripped, so that's annoying. So I've just had an idea of maybe adding some heat set inserts into here since, um, well, there's not really much else I can do aside from mount it around all these other components, so. I'm gonna see if that'll work, and if not, that's fine. That's two. Okay, not half bad. I'd like to have it somewhere around here. I'm just not sure exactly how, but I've got the mounting holes now, so I'm just gonna whip up a quick, quick bracket in Fusion 360 and, and see what I come up with. Oh, it's not extruding again. You gotta be joking.
So it turns out my thermostat must have been damaged when I installed it, and since I don't have any spares, I'll be borrowing one from my mini printer, as it doesn't work anyway. So three different types of screws later, finally found the ones that would fit and give me the right length. So that's cool. And uh, they should be easier to remove as well and not strip as much as the other ones. Now, I may have sacrificed that printer's thermistor and I may have sacrificed this printer's thermistor since I've already broken two. Don't hate on me, but it, if it works, which it does, worth it. So now we're reading temperature. Oh now I got a cable manage. I love seeing this machine extrude because I've had so many blockages with it, at least four, and it's been driving me mad because I have to take the whole thing apart and that's how I stripped the screw. I ran into another hot end clog so I switched filaments to the one that was sitting in a bag of silica gel packets hoping that it would contain less moisture. So quick note to self, filament can really affect your print quality. I've cheaped out for a while, so I've only got cheap spools left, which is why I've been getting such varying quality. I mean, this is looking so much better than like this up here. That was pretty good. That one's not very good. And these, these were not good at all. And this is at like 175 out of 256 power or 255. So it's got a lot more to do. Okay, so it failed because the fan is cooling the hot end too much. So I've just performed a hot tighten and I think that that's gonna solve most of my issues for now. I also replaced the fan because that had broken blades. Um, just overall tweaks. It's printing again, so I'll check up with you guys once this part is printed. So I was just about to do an E-Steps calibration, as you can kind of see there's uh, some ink, oh and there's ink on my fingers, um, but yeah, this, this wasn't, oh where's my finger at, here, this wasn't screwed in properly, um, there's, a, there's a thing that I can screw in there to adjust the tension, and that wasn't proper, oh here we go, already it's looking better, a bit hard to hear me, but I'll check back with you guys once we're a few minutes in. This is my first time using gyroid infill and it looks, looks mesmerizing. Aside from a couple of minor artifacts, I was getting pleasing print quality. 
However, I was having issues with the Marlin firmware and when I tried reflashing it and nothing worked, I decided to get Clipper running, which took around two days with all of the little errors I kept facing, but in the long run, I'm glad I did it now. Okay, let's wrap this up. Much better. First proper line after, well, first proper layer after like 12 hours of troubleshooting. Still skipping, I don't know why. Using my limited CAD design skills, I began to make a base that could hold the mainboard and Raspberry Pi. I also repurposed the axial fans so that I could cool the stepper drivers, as they were overheating, most likely due to improper VREFs. For some reason, after switching to Clipper firmware, my print dimensions were incorrect, and since I was struggling with fixing it using the rotational distance tutorials, I decided to just print a bunch of calibration cubes at varying sizes to find which percentage worked best. Now I know this may look silly, but I'm hoping the cooling potential is enough because I've got a fan on there, extruder is getting extremely hot, um, that one is too loud. That's like 13,000 RPM or something goofy. So it's like, yeah, a bit too loud. So we'll see how this goes. Haven't had a successful print yet. So even though I've swapped the extruder motor for a proper larger NEMA 17 motor, it's still not enough. And there's also no internal gearing in there. So obviously a larger stepper motor won't work, but what I could do is get one of those stepper motors that has an internal three to one gear ratio. I think Triangle Lab sells one on AliExpress. So I'll take a look at that as a uh, future option that might possibly help us with our extrusion issues. Finally, I got a Benchy that I was pleased with, which took just under 20 minutes to complete. However, it was not following the speedboat race rules, but that wasn't of any concern right now. For a final recap of changes, we switched the stepper motor, added a temporary glass plate, flashed clipper firmware, added a little stepper cooling fan, which will hopefully be replaced with this larger one, swapped some thermistors and heater cartridges, added the new hotting components, and got mainsail running also. Components that are still on the way are a PEI flex plate, 12 volt 5015 fans, a bimetal heat break, and some bed insulation. If you would like to see a part three, please let me know, and if the video gets 150 likes, I'll convert the whole machine to 24 volt components and get some really cool ones, as well as the ones that I've been hoping to try out. Thanks for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you again soon.